hi. Thank you for the kisses. Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new here, my name's Taylor. I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel, I feature content that's generally focused on knitting and spinning. Um, today, I'm excited to review with you my current work in progress. I've pretty much put everything else on the back burner this week. And last week I showed you the beginning of this project. I just realized that I put my project down last night mid-row very late at night and so I'm just gonna quickly knit to the end of the round or row so that you can see it you know in it more of its true form. Um, if you hear a little bit of a rattling sound it's because I used this little progress keeper here as a stitch marker. It's a little bell. I will say that I have yet to swatch for the bubble cardigan that I anticipate knitting this year. Um, there's something about swatching that really just turns me off to starting projects. I don't know, I just, I don't love to do it, but I know I need to, so that's gonna happen very soon. Um, the yarn does seem exceptionally soft and I'm excited to start working with it. I just haven't put any thought into anything but this project this week. While I get to the end of this row, I wonder how you are doing and how you're holding up out there in the world. It's a scary place sometimes. I have spent a fair amount of my time this week dedicating a lot of focus to grading this pattern. I have a whole spreadsheet set up. Um, I've been thinking about showing you guys how I kind of do the maths for things. Uh, I hesitate to do that because I feel like someone's gonna see my full transparency and either criticize me for um, doing it the way I do or doing it at all. I don't know. What I've put a lot of thought into though is the proper sizing. I do want to make sure that this pattern is size inclusive and it has taken a lot of thought for me to fully comprehend what that means. And I've been studying a lot of different schematics um, because what I don't wanna do is create a product for myself, which is really why I'm knitting it. This is a hole in my wardrobe I intend to fill with what I've acquired in my stash. And I don't wanna make the mistake of grading for sizes that are completely different than my own and of a different shape than my own shape um, and it not be the same product. I feel like if I'm making a sweater that is with a lot of positive ease in the upper arms and you know, a deep yoke, I definitely want the depth of the yoke to be relative to the size that I'm grading for, but also not, you know, accidentally give it sleeves that aren't as wide as they should be. And um, not all patterns go up um, to like 70 inches, which I do intend, I am, I have already graded this pattern to fit because it's worn with about, I mean, the amount of ease you want to wear your garments in is totally, um, personal in my opinion. I think if you're wearing a sweater with 8 to 10 inches of ease, you could probably get away with 6 inches of ease if you don't want it to fit too big. I feel like smaller bodies sometimes are swimming in that amount of ease if you think about it being a proportion to the total body size. Do you know what I'm saying? So sometimes like a sweater with 10 inches of ease on a 60 inch bust I imagine it's gonna look different on the body of like a, a 30 inch bust with 10 inches of ease. Like you might not need 10 whole inches. You might rather have six to eight inches because of the ratio of ease to the body. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, here is what I'm lovingly calling the Kingston Cardi given the fact that it's knit with Kingston yarn and I don't have um, an amazing, you know, creative mind for words, but I love alliteration. Mm. 
Before I show you my cardigan, I want to give you a little close up of my manicure. I did a little at home gel polish. This brand, Madam Glam, reached out to me and they asked if I wanted to try some of their products and share them with you on my channel. And I wasn't sure at first because I genuinely neglect my nails. I don't even wear gloves in the garden, which is a huge downfall for me because my hands dry out so much that I pick at the cuticles and they just look a total mess and I thought actually this would be a good challenge because one I do not budget for time or money wise going to a salon and having someone help me with that element of self-care and I could probably use it like I really needed to start taking better care of my hands and so I tried it out. My first attempt was a total failure. I didn't really know what I was doing at first, um, but I did learn pretty much the next, the very next day. I had no patience for it. I just learned how to remove it, which is really simple. Um, I just like soaked my fingers and gently peeled it off and it came off quite easy without any like damage to my nails, um, which gave me confidence to try again. And I did, um, you know, thinner coats of the base, the color, and the the top coat and the neat thing I like about this like this is genuine like review like they're not paying me to tell you that I like it but um they give you like a little led lamp thing like this I it's a usb plug so if I were smart I would have plugged it into like my computer so that I could be at a tabletop but I plugged it into my wall outlet so I'm like on the floor in the dark like painting my nails um which I think if I had done it with more light in a more comfortable environment my right hand which I had to do with my non-dominant left hand would look a little bit better um but it makes the process really quick and easy so by having to cure the polish with the light instead of waiting for time to dry it, I was like ready to knit almost immediately after painting my nails, which has like never happened in my life. And I've been gardening without gloves still. I've been scouring pots and pans. I burnt dinner the other night and it didn't mess up my, my polish at all. I just feel like I found something that a little like holds up to my um, recklessness and self abandon. <laughs> um, and I'm pleased with it. I'm, I think I found like a signature color. It's almost clear, but it's this like very gentle pink, like a see-through sort of pink that looks just like a natural nail bed. Yeah. So anyway, Madam Glam, do you like it? Do you love it? Would you want to wear it? They're going to give you a coupon code if you're interested though, and you can save 30% off your total. I'll put the link in the description below and the coupon code here on the screen for you to see, and that will be below as well. So if you're interested in trying it out, you can. I would totally recommend it. Love it so much. But let's get into my project. I'm currently knitting a self-designed raglan cardigan. This is knit with Jill Draper makes stuff Kingston yarn. It's a, it says Kingston DK, but I already talked about this. It's definitely a worsted weight yarn. I mean, there's no question. It is what it is. And I think that maybe they intended to make a DK, but it turned out a little differently. It's just that the yarn is very dense. There's like no air inside it. It's woolen-ish prepped. I mean, it's gotta be a woolen prep because how it's constructed and I'll get a little closer so that you can see the fabric but it's it's like a tweed yarn so it's all like different colors blended together on what I imagine was a machine carding method and it was spun in kind of more of a worsted fashion so it just has a lot of I don't know body to it like it's very sturdy very structured very heavy weight fabric for a dk i would definitely call it a worsted weight yarn i wanted this cardigan to fit comfortably over other knits a lot of the times cardigans fit just like a sweater but it's open this fits deeper in the yoke to accommodate a sweater underneath and you know like i say in every one of my videos i really just don't like 
garments that fit too close to the armpit area because they will felt over time. So I'm wearing this cardigan over top of my Ducat sweater. This is a top-down raglan design that I slightly modified in the making of it. I started with the extra small and then as I continued to knit the yoke I decided I wanted to keep increasing to make it a little deeper and then once I met the stitch count for the size small I just continued to work instructions for the small on the Ducat pattern. What I ended up with is a sweater that has about a 10 inch deep yoke um, which I think is slightly bigger than maybe the dimensions. I, I don't I haven't referenced the dimensions of the Ducat pattern, but I did measure my sweater's dimensions just before recording so that I could check in with the pattern that I'm drafting and make sure that the cardigan pattern that I'm writing the instructions for is slightly bigger so that I can wear this sweater over top with just enough ease that I can comfortably wear my sweaters beneath it and that the math confirms the goal. I've finished joining the body and I'm just working on the ribbing right now. I did incorporate decreases at the sides um, because one thing I personally don't love about sweaters designed with what I consider a great amount of positive ease, like eight to 10 inches is a great amount to me. I don't love the way they fit my body at the bottom half. I always introduce waist shaping, even when it's not ran into the pattern. And so I have written those decreases into the pattern. It is somewhat of a mid rise length. Girl, you are playing with fire. So I'll give you a close up. Ooh. I'm so sorry. So as you can see, the cable motif sits between the increases. And then I've introduced just a few rows of traveling cables to bring those to twist at the side seams. I knew I wanted to do a pick up and knit button band. Um, which is kind of like worked in the opposite direction because I noticed when there's a button band that's worked as you continue the pattern back and forth, there's two things. One, you have to know in advance exactly where you want your buttons. And I would much rather like have the sweater blocked, like almost finished, and then decide exactly where I want my buttons to be. Like, I don't want to have the sweater not even knit yet and then decide exactly where my buttons go because a lot of the times I'm making it the way I want it and that is to be determined. But then a lot of the times when the button band is worked vertically along with the sweater, where the buttons kind of give a little bit of tension, there's almost like extra space between the stitches because there's just, it doesn't, it doesn't hold its shape the same way. I am going to work, I think, a two by two button band um, that is going to be probably no wider than what I have now um, because I, of the circumference of my buttons. But of course, that could be tailored to any person's preference. Like I would do it relative to the size of your button so that it's just big enough that it fits, but maybe not too wide of a band and I intend to finish it with an I-cord edge because I really like the way an I-cord edge looks and feels. I feel like it gives a lot of nice structure to that part of a garment that is, you know, could easily kind of go out of shape. The sleeves I'm, I've started but I quickly abandoned because I realized I need to do like careful math before I begin my decreases. I want to know that I have instructions in place for all sizes to really map that out. And I've fully mapped out the body of the cardigan, including the yoke for all sizes, kind of writing the entire pattern as I go. I intended to put pockets in this pattern, but because of its length and the ribbing, I didn't want my pocket to be like in interfering with my bust and I didn't want it to be a tiny pocket either. So what I'm intending to do is add secret pockets to the inside and I'll go into that later once it's executed. And 
I just started the sleeve. So I haven't really made any progress there because I had to first sit down and plug in all the numbers for all the sizes to determine the accurate repeat of decreases. Um, Cause there's so many different ways you can go about a sleeve. I didn't know where I wanted the ribbing to start or um, how narrow I wanted the forearm to be, like whether I wanted the forearm to be loose or not loose. So I haven't really figured that out yet. Kind of designing as I knit, but I'm also knitting as I design at the same time, if that makes sense. Before we go, I thought I'd show you the red bud tree we just planted last fall. The flowers should open very soon. And my spring garden is a work in progress. I put a lot of bulbs in the ground in the fall, not really knowing how to plant bulbs in the most aesthetic way. I had some mums here that sort of fizzled out, um, but the ones in the shade really held on strong through the winter which was a surprise to me. I thought the other three would do well, but I'm gonna put some tomatoes in the front yard. Um, one of the things I love about living in Baltimore City is we don't have an HOA, so I can do whatever I want. And I need to prep this bed I cleared for tomatoes with some leaf mulch. Um, but I have a lot of ideas of what I wanna move in the fall. Uh, these crocus, they don't get enough sun, I don't think. So I'm gonna move those to the backyard and I'm gonna put some more daffodils in there. And then these guys, I forget what they're called. Maybe you know and you can tell me in the comments, but I'm gonna plant those in another area of the backyard. And this is a gardenia bush that got a little sad once the temperatures dropped back down again. You can see a little bit of it died off here. Um, but hopefully it will bounce back. If not, you know, I can just replace it with another little shrub. I just put this hydrangea in the ground and Brian brought this little plant home for me. I'm gonna tuck that back in the shade there. And I did plant up my containers for the spring. I had this um, arborvitae that just wasn't doing well. Our neighborhood kitty cat was marking it and it kind of just killed the bottom third. So I, dug it out of the ground, I put it in this large container, and I bought three hellebores of another variety that I put in this container with some creeping Jenny. And I think that the Arbor Vitae looks quite good. I'm trying not to show my house number <laughs> in this video, so I can't give you like the whole top. But um, then I have a flowering heather bush right here that has really transplanted quite well into this container. I love the way flowers sound when you touch them and they smell really good too. Can you smell it? Star Baby and I are chilling in the sunroom. I thought I'd give you a little plant tour of our sunroom plants. I don't know anything about plants. I don't know what they're called. I can't tell you how to care for them but I do know how to bring them home and Brian does a really good job keeping them all alive. When we first started dating, I think I bought this fiddle leaf fig tree here. It was just like two leaves and it is now quite tall, about as tall as I am. And I cut it back uh, just where you see that branch, that branching there, I cut it back last year, I guess. And I propagated this tree from that others. Brian really does help take care of pretty much all the plants inside and he just brought home for me and my request this new little snake plant which I'm going to put there and I'm going to transplant this guy into that container so I can use the terracotta one it's in for the new snake. And this is our Norfolk Island pine. She's a big girl. And she's growing strong in that corner there. So this is the, you know, this is what we got going on. This is the space I sit in most during the spring and summer when there's more light. And it's nice and cool too, because it has a lot of shade facing um, west, north. I don't even know. And that is it for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, my name's Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care.